and take your Bibles and your Articles of Faith and turn over to Article 23, Christian Stewardship. Christian Stewardship. We're looking at this first two paragraphs. It says, we believe Christians are not their own, but belong wholly to God. We believe everything we have is not our own, but given to us to use for God's divine purposes. As such, God has commissioned us to be stewards of the things we have given in service to Jesus Christ. We believe as stewards we will either be rewarded or chastised depending on how well we use the resources given to our care and management, both individually and nationally. By extension, together as a church, we believe we are to act together similar as a faithful wife does in managing her husband's household. So previous week, so we looked at those, uh, the overall concept of Christian stewardship and the way we should model our lives and the way that we serve the Lord. Uh, not just as Bible students, not just as people who consume knowledge, not just people who just do a set things, but rather modeling their whole life to live after the Lord in service to the Lord. Uh, and we've looked at several verses and passages so far, and then we are on Matthew chapter 25. Uh, we looked at the first part of that, and then we are going to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 25. And we're going to look at, uh, we looked at last week the, the faithful stewards versus the unfaithful steward uh, who went in uh, and talking about the receiving of the kingdom, receiving of rewards, receiving position in the kingdom. Now this is not about going to heaven or going to hell. Uh, the outer darkness is not a uh, figure of, oh, this guy lost his salvation, now he's going to hell, but rather it is uh, somebody who is, uh, has a position in the kingdom, the millennial kingdom of Christ, versus somebody who is just kind of on the uh, badlands, if you will, just somebody who is not, uh, who is in outer darkness. They do not, they're not close to the Lord, but they're still in the kingdom, but in the outer gar in darkness, and they wish they could have done more for the Lord, and then so a lot of, a lot of Christians, they will in the millennial kingdom, they will be put under service for, to another brother who has been faithful. Uh, that which he hath was given to, a, to the one with ten talents. And he was placed under that, and then he was, uh, he was gnashing his teeth, not for the fact that he's in pain and been tormented in hell, but rather for the fact that he lost his rewards and was saved only but by the skin of his teeth. And he is at the furthest ends, if you will, at the outer edges of heaven, or, or the millennial kingdom, if you will. Just as there are degrees... In hell, there so too there are degrees in heaven, if you will, based upon rewards. Now people say, now obviously you can't be saved or lost based upon, or at least go to heaven or hell based upon your works, but you can receive positions uh, of service and authority in heaven and in the millennial kingdom based upon what you do for the Lord, based upon your faithfulness to the Lord. God is not going to give somebody who's been faithless, who has acted like a lost person, uh, he's not going to give to them uh, high positions of authority. He's going to give to those faithful servants who have served him faithfully, uh, regardless of good times or bad, he's going to give them the better positions. And so, yes, you as a Christian, you can use your liberty for whatever you want. Uh, you can live like the world for the rest of your days and be saved but by the skin of your teeth. Or you can be a faithful servant and through free will service uh, gain a greater position in heaven and in, in uh, the millennial kingdom as well, in the kingdom of our Lord. And so let's go ahead and go to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Of course, we looked at the faithful stewards. Uh, and verse 30, it says, Cast ye the unprofitable servant unto the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. It doesn't say they go to heaven. They go to the outer darkness. Uh, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with them, shall he sit upon the throne in glory. And, and this is verse uh, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and shall all the holy angels with them, shall sit, he sit in his throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and they shall separate them one from another, as shepherd divideth the sheep from the goats. So we saw the first part, the stewards is an individual reward. Here is a national reward, if you will, the nations. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and shall separate one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats upon his left. And shall, and shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom 
prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? Then saw, saw, when saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto thee, Verily I say unto you, insomuch as ye have done it unto, the least, unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So we see here the importance of national, if you will, the corporate fellowship, the brethren. Uh, it's ye done it unto these my brethren. Uh, and so the nations will be judged based upon, you know, when they go into the kingdom, based upon uh, those people who have taken care of the righteous, taken care of the brethren, taken care of the, uh, those who were following the Lord. And, it's, and they're asking, when did we do those things? So when we take care of one another, when we care for each other, when somebody is hungry and we feed them, you know, James said, uh, what good does it your brother if you uh, go to them and say, be warmed and filled when you have within your power to give your brother uh, food and raiment, and yet you say, be, uh, and you just offer a prayer to them or a word of encouragement, be warmed and filled, but you don't give them those things. What good is it? What good is it? What purpose is it? Uh, and here in this passage, we see that when the Lord comes again, sits in his kingdom, he's going to judge the nations. He's going to judge the people, not only just about what they did for the Lord, but also he's going to judge them based upon what they did to the brethren, the brethren. And so when you live your life, you're thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to get all these rewards. I'm going to do all these good things and wonderful things. But then you live your life uh, cursing the brethren and thinking that there's no good brethren. And I'm the only good person. I'm the only one who's doing things for the Lord. Uh, and you have this individualistic, selfish mentality of everything that you do is perfect and nothing that anybody else can do can measure up. And you're measuring and comparing each other uh, by each other. And you're, and you're using your resources and things for your own selfish gain. And you're not helping your brethren. Then you are not righteous, if you will. You are not correct. You are not doing what the Lord has called you to do. So here we see the individual working for the Lord uh, in, as a steward. Focused on the things of the Lord. Doing what God has given you. Buying and selling and, and occupying until he comes. And then here nationally, as a group, as a, as a brotherhood, if you will, uh, we are to uh, do for one another, to feed the thirsty, to feed the hungry, and the, to, to hold them. And not just for the sake of filling their bellies, but it says here, it says, "...in so much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren." And so a lot of times people say, well, you know, Christian service, they'll, they'll take this passage and they say, well, Christian service is not about preaching the gospel. It's not about uh, making sure that people are saved or believers or have the spirit of Christ within them. But rather they just say, well, you know, because we're all created in the image of God, then uh, we should just go about feeding people, physically fulfilling their stomachs, uh, giving them better quality education, doing all these physical things for them while not worrying about the spiritual uh, and then here it says, you didn't do it just because for the fact that they're people, but rather just for, for in so much as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren. See, the, these are the relationship between believers, not just your relationship with the world. Your relationship with the world is a steward buying and selling and getting gain. And you're causing people to be saved. You are, you are bringing people into the fold, if you will. You're causing them to become brothers. And then as you're causing them to become brothers, you then take care of the brotherhood. You care. You have, you have a care for one for another. And so here in this passage, we see the importance of first, you know, obviously there's the, in chapter 25, we didn't go over the, the, the uh, parable about the virgins, the wise and the unwise and so forth. Uh, and, but here we're primarily looking at the stewards the individual, and then the corporate whole, the brethren, how they relate one to another and how they are taking care of each other. 
And the righteous stewards are the ones who are not only working for the Lord, but they're also helping the brethren with what they've been given. So the, gen- the, the steward with ten talents, what is he doing with those ten talents? And, and how is he being a faithful steward? Not only is he buying and selling and getting gain and then earning talents for the Lord and earning things for the Lord, he is also caring for those who only have the one talent. He's caring for those that don't have what, what they need uh, to uh, receive. So here we have the nations who have, who, are, who, have uh, who have raiment, clothing the naked brethren, who have food, feeding the, the hungry brethren, and who have drink, giving drink to the thirsty brethren. I was a stranger and you took me in. Even though they are, that we don't know them personally, we know that they're part of the brotherhood, we take them in, we care for them, we give them hospitality, we have hospitality one for another. Uh, we honor all men, and in, in particular the brotherhood. So we say here, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed unto everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So there is another type of if you will, nations, uh, types of nations that look at the brotherhood and they despise them, they hate them. So in the first individualistic stewardship, we see that there are the wise stewards uh, that regardless of how much they were given, they use it for the Lord. Uh, they use it for the Lord, and he allows them to determine how they would do those things. Uh, but he just wants to at least, even the one with one talent, to at the very least give it to somebody else so that they can use it uh, to buy an exchange. And so uh, he should not just hide it in a napkin somewhere and, and not let it get any value from it. We need to use the things that God has given to us to give value. Uh, even if it is uh, the smallest thing as even a smile towards another person. Uh, that has value. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't have any talents. Well, a word of prayer, a word of encouragement. Well, I don't really have much of anything, but I have two candy bars. I'll give one to another person. That's, that is a type of using what you've been given. You know, you think about a Snickers bar, just a little piece of candy, uh, or, you know, even, even, I would say even like maybe, you know, a, um, a piece of hard candy, the very t- tiny piece like that, little, little piece like that. Uh, if you give that to a diabetic who needs it, you know, you, you've saved his life, if you will. Because you, you never know what very little you might have that, uh, that you actually are a spiritual blessing to somebody. You save somebody's life because they go in diabetic coma, and then, oh, you, you now help that person with just a tiny little piece of thing that you, you just threw on the back and bottom of your purse. You never thought you were going to have it, and then, oh, here it is right there. Uh, and that's the way it is with the things that we have. We may not understand the value of what we have, uh, a, a, a little smile or a piece of candy, uh, the value that might be to somebody else. We not, may not even value the words that we say to each other. Uh, every idle word, though, the Bible says, will be judged of the Lord. And, and now, obviously, we don't want to live our lives like the, uh, like the hard steward where he's so afraid of using the things of God. Oh, no, every idle word that I might say, that I might, I better not say anything whatsoever. You know, the true believer, if he closes his mouth, he's going to, it's going to well up in his mouth. He's going to have to speak. He's going to want to say something. Uh, he's going to want to use it. But we understand that there's people so afraid to use the things that God has given to them that they hide it away in a napkin because they think that if they use it wrong way, then they could cause great harm. But the Lord doesn't want you to hide it away. He wants you to use it. It's a better value in using what little you have than fearing what might happen if you do? So oftentimes people fear the things that may never come to pass. And God doesn't want us to live that way. Or what shall we say unto the sick or in prison? And, and when he's, in verse 38, when, he, when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee, or when we saw thee sick, when your brethren are sick and, and need help, are you there to encourage them? Are you there to heal them? If you have a cure, you want to give them the cure. Just like somebody who is diabetic, like I said, with that hard piece of candy, that's, in, in a sense, that's a, that's a treatment that is something to help them. Or in prison and came unto thee. When somebody is nationally, when they're not, when, when people look down upon them, but they're they're suffering for a righteous cause. Are you going to run away from them? Are you going to despise them as well? Or are you going to stand with them and stick with them and encourage them in their persecution? 
and came unto thee. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Insomuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So in the previous passage, of course, we have the individuals with stewards. They're, they're, all, they're all believers, but one, he chose not to use what God has given to him, and then he lost his reward, saved but by the skin of his teeth, in the furthest reaches of the region in outer darkness, and he's wishing that he had done more. Uh, in this passage, we have two groups of, of people, uh, two groups of nations, if you will, two types of nations. One is a righteous nation, one is a righteous group of people uh, that is doing what they have for each other, taking care of each other. That's the definition of a nation basically is, is a group of people taking care of one another, a governing body, if you will, of people that are of one mind or so. So you can have this as a church, you can have this as a nation, you can have this as a state or, or a city or a group of people. But here in this passage, I like to see it as a righteous nation versus an unrighteous nation. So you have in Christendom, you have two types of nations, if you will. The, the nations of the Lord, who are serving their brethren, taking care of their brethren, doing what they're supposed to be doing. And you have the wicked nations of supposed, that call themselves Christians. You have denominations, if you will, denominations of Christians uh, that are not buying and selling and getting gain. They are not, as a corporate whole, uh, doing the things of the Lord, they are more interested in investing in the things of the world, more interested in investing in the things of the devil, and causing division and divisiveness, and, and trying to uh, cause people to live in wicked lifestyles. And they are spending their time on the physical feeding and not the spiritual feeding. They are doing the things that are not correct. He says, he says uh, here, he says, to prepare for the devil and their angels, for I was a hungered, and you gave me no meat. Just think about this. He's talking about him, him, him. The, the Lord is in the spiritual realm. Uh, when we... When we only focus on the, the physical, and we only focus on fulfilling people's lustly appetites, fleshly appetites, yes, it's important that you feed the hungry and clothe the poor. Uh, but again, we see here that they are feeding and clothing the brethren is the key point here. Not that they're just in general feeding everybody. Uh, they're feeding the brethren so that the brethren can do the spiritual work that needs to be done. Uh, and so, for I was hungered, and ye gave me no meat. You're not feeding, you're not fulfilling uh, the brethren, you're not fulfilling the body of Christ. You are not, you're not putting the foundation of the body of Christ. He gave me no drink. You gave me no drink. So you're not, you're not, you're not helping the body of Christ. I was a stranger and ye took me not in. Oh, you, you don't believe in the political atmosphere that we believe in, and so we're not going to treat you as a brother. Oh, you don't believe in the correct doctrines of this and that and the other thing, so we're not going to treat you as a brother. Uh, they're always looking for ways to decide on not giving you spiritual meat and drink, not trying to sustain the brotherhood, not taking care of the brotherhood. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in, naked, and ye clothed me not sick, and ye pr and in prison, and ye visited me not. A lot of times people think, well, because I do all these things for the physical and for the lost, then I'm going to get all these rewards and I'm going to go to heaven. No, he's talking about me. Uh, you did not take care of the brethren. And shall they also answer him and say unto the Lord, when we saw with thee hungry or thirst or stranger or naked or sick or in prison, it did not minister unto thee. So these people, they are saying... When did we do all these? When didn't we do these things? I thought we were doing all these things. You know, a lot of times people say, uh, I, I've given to the poor and I've given all these things, but you didn't give it to the Lord. You didn't do it for the Lord. You did it for the physical satisfaction of somebody's life, but not for uh, the glory of the Lord. And then shall they also answer and say, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? And he shall answer and say unto them, Verily I said to you, as much as ye did not to one of the least of these, ye did not to me. And these shall go away unto everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. See, God wants a nation of holy people uh, that are a body to him and caring for him. That's the, and, and caring for one another, caring for the body. That's the type of people he wants in his nation. That's the type of people he will get in his nation. Uh, and so here in the 
uh, in the verses, we can move on to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through 48. says in verse 22, he says, And said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought of your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body, what shall you put on. Well, I thought that, uh, that, that, we, would, uh, get, that we would get rewards based upon uh, food and raiment and all that stuff. Well, no, it's, it's not about us getting those things. It's about us giving those things to, to help each other. He says, Neither for the body and what you shall put on, for the life is more than the meat, and the body is more than the raiment. So, so if, if we're comparing Matthew chapter um, 25 and those verses about food and raiment and being hungry, we need to understand that it is talking more than just the physical food, talking more about than the physical raiment and physical uh, water and stuff, because we understand that food is talking about the bread of life. Uh, and then the spiritual water is the water of life. Uh, the the uh, and then the raiment is that white uh, is that white garment. Are you clothing people uh, by feeding them the bread of life? Are you are you or at least uh, giving them that righteous garment, that white garment uh, of linen, uh, that spiritual garment of linen? Or are you just physically doing it? Are you focusing only on the thought of their life, their physical life? only focusing on the thought of what they shall eat or for their body or what shall they put on or are you thinking about the fact that life is more than meat and the body is more than raiment see there are nations of people that focus like the salvation army they focus on clothing people where do you go for cheap clothes you know the salvation army where do you go for cheap furniture salvation army uh, and so forth so we understand that there there's a lot of people that focus on the physical food and raiment and, and, and drink. But here we see that it is more than meat. The body is more than raiment. So there is more important than just clothing the physical body. It is clothing the spiritual body. The life is more than meat and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouses nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? The birds are physical beasts. They're physical animals. They, but yet God takes care of them. God clothes them. God feeds them. And get, he, he creates them uh, beautifully. Uh, he says, consider them... They don't have all these things. So oftentimes people are busy storing up. Oh, we can't give you the food and raiment because we're storing it up for uh, something else. And so it is with the spiritual. So oftentimes people have storehouses of spiritual food and raiment that they do not give to the people. Oh, we're just going to feed them physical food, but we're not going to give them spiritual food. Oh, we're going to use the physical, but we're not going to use the spiritual. And which of you, which taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that which thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Why take ye thought for the rest? So we need to understand the importance of the spiritual uh, and to use that, uh, that, uh, that in addition to uh, the physical. It says, consider the lilies, how they grow, and they toil not, how they spin not. And yet I say unto you, Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will ye, he clothe you, O ye of little faith? See, he's talking about the physical things, and he says, how much more important are you, the spiritual, uh, the thing that is, the body that is more than raiment, the body that is more than the physical. He says, Seek not what ye shall eat, nor what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of those things. So here we see, for all these things do the nations. When Christ comes and judges the nations, and these are the things that the nations are seeking after, food, raiment, and, 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 uh, and, and drink. But yet here he says, it's more than that. It's more than that. 
And you're not supposed to hoard those things. You're supposed to give them out, but also give out the spiritual. Don't hoard the spiritual like the unfaithful servant did. But rather, seek ye the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. So what is the kingdom of God? And all these things shall be added unto you. So you are seeking the kingdom of God. You are seeking the spiritual. You are focusing on the spiritual, not the physical. And then you will get the food, you will get the raiment, and your brethren will have uh, those available for all the other brethren. uh, So that if you are hungry, you will be fed the physical so that you can focus on the spiritual. Are you using your physical treasures so that the brotherhood can focus on the spiritual? Well, um, yeah, I don't want to give. I'm just going to tell my brethren to be fed and warmed, be filled and warmed, and yet I'm not going to give those things so they can focus on the spiritual. I'm going to just leave those things to myself so that I can hoard them. Now he says, just as you need to not worry about those things. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in heaven that faileth not. There no thief approacheth, neither moth nor corruption. Now obviously he's not talking about, as we talked about the faithful wife. A lot of times people will again take this passage and they say, oh, look here, that means you shouldn't have a savings account. Oh, look here, that means you shouldn't buy land. That means you shouldn't uh, make goods. That means you shouldn't uh, provide for your family. That means that you should just uh, let what what comes may uh, and you're just supposed to just sell everything. It says sell that you have and give alms. It says basically... To, to make sure that you are focusing on the right things. If you're hoarding up, buy, buying treasures and storehouses, buying food and raiment, uh, and you're not focusing on the spiritual, then you're doing it wrong. Uh, you need to sell all that you have, all those extra things. So notice in this passage, I'm not saying uh, it's focusing on the, the, the spiritual. You use what you have, the, the, the physical, to sustain the spiritual. And, and, of course, we see with the faithful wife, she doesn't just sell her land and not grow anything on it. She buyeth the land, she considereth the land, and she worketh with her hands. It doesn't say sell all, the, all that land you have and not use it and sacrifice to where you become destitute. It does not say that. It does not teach that. It says, don't hoard up all these things so that you cannot use it. Just as we saw with these spiritual uh, stewards where the guy hoarded and hid away uh, the thing and never used it to to do it. Instead, he was supposed to buy and sell and get gain. And so sell what he has to put to the exchangers what he has uh, so that they can use it. Uh, And so to here, sell that ye have so that it can be used. Give alms. No, sir, sell that ye have and give alms, to, to give to those that need it. Uh, provide yourselves bags which wash not old and treasure. So he's using the physical to provide for the eternal, the, the temporary for the eternal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. It doesn't say don't have physical things. It says to use your physical things to buy spiritual things. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. So when we are nations, when we're judged, we're going to be judged based upon what we use the physical to help the spiritual brethren uh, to do their work. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. Oh, now we're going back to the stewards again uh, as you will return from the wedding. Uh, So we're waiting for the return of Christ. We're waiting for the marriage supper of the Lamb. We are waiting for that return. And when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. So when he returns, his body, his bride, will be waiting and ready for him to receive. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. He doesn't see them hoarding up stuff that they don't need. He sees them watching. Remember, that goes back again to Matthew chapter 25, the faithful servants with their lamps burning and bright versus those not watching, not paying attention. Verily I say unto you, he that shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. This know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, 
he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh in the hour when ye think not. So here we see that the servants are just not haphazardly selling out everything that they have and haphazardly just giving alms to everything, but they're watching, preparing, getting the household ready for whenever the master will come. And so the faithful wife, the faithful steward, the faithful nations are focusing on, you, on using everything that they have to sustain and help the brotherhood so they as a strong household uh, can be ready for the return of Christ, can be ready in strengthening their household. Uh, they are buying and selling all the goods so that they can get spiritual uh, treasure for their heavenly uh, master. And this know that if the good men of the house uh, had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and would not suffer his house to be broken through. We are need to be pay attention to what good we can do and what bad we can prevent. And so notice here, if you, are, if you sold everything that you had, you would not have a house. You would not have, you would not have a good man. You would not have uh, people watching or servants because you would have nothing to sustain them. But here we have a strong house, we have servants in the household, we have people alert and ready to go uh, for the master's use, and so they're focusing on using the physical, selling what they have, and giving alms to provide for the spiritual. And this know that if the, and verse 40, be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. So we need to be focused on getting our household ready, getting the house of the Lord ready. And Peter said unto them, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? So is this just for, is this just for uh, the local church? Is this just for the twelve disciples? Is this just for a group of people? And this is what the Lord says. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, and give them their portion of meat in due season? He said, Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. So he is in the process of serving the Lord as the Lord has commanded. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. You know, we think about uh, Joseph being faithful servant. Uh, and you know, obviously Joseph had some good times and some bad times, but he was faithful in everything that he was given to. And he became the ruler uh, in Potiphar's household, he was second unto uh, Potiphar himself, and then he became a ruler of the nation of Egypt, second only to the uh, ruler there. But he didn't do that by just selling everything that his master had. He didn't do that just by selling uh, everything, all the grain that he had. He did it by storing up, properly preparing for what would come. Uh, and he used those things to benefit in the proper way. But, and if that servant say unto his heart, in his heart, My Lord delayeth in coming, and shall begin to beat his men servants. Let's go back and going back to the nations of the people, caring for the people of God, and to beat his men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken. If the nations eat, beat their fellow servants, the, the, nation, the denominations of Christians, beat their fellow servants and, and hate them and despise them. It shows their heart uh, and to eat and drink and to be drunken. And the Lord that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at an hour when he is not aware. They're so focused on the physical. They're so focused on the not providing for the spiritual that they are stopped looking for their heavenly master. And he will cut them asunder and will point to him portion with the unbelievers. So, of course, we looked at how that unfaithful steward was cast into outer darkness at the very edge of, of the kingdom. But these nations, they are not merely just unfaithful servants, but rather they are wicked servants. They are people that claim to be Christians, and yet they do not look to the spiritual. See, the problem with the unfaithful steward was not that he wasn't saved or wasn't a servant, but rather that he just didn't use what the Lord had given to him. But here we see that these people are not only not using what the Lord has given to them, but they are beating and hurting the other brethren. 
the other believers. And those type of people, he says, they don't care for the body. They're not even going to be, they're not even believers. They pretend to be, but they're not. They don't look for the spiritual. And the Lord's servant will come in that day when he looketh not for them, and at the hour when he is not aware, and will cut them asunder, and will appoint in his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Think about people that, uh, that have the scriptures, and their, their church has the scriptures, and they say, well, that part of the scriptures doesn't apply anymore. That used to be abomination in the Old Testament, but now it's okay. Everybody got, God loves everybody, and everything's okay. But here it says, but, but he that knoweth not and did commit those things worthy of stripes shall be with few stripes. For whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. And to whom men hath committed much of him will ask the more. So we see here the importance of being a faithful steward, the importance of being a faithful nation, and the importance of taking care of the brotherhood. And the importance of being uh, focused on the spiritual as stewards and servants of the Lord. So we'll finish there, and then we will look again uh, next week at Romans chapter 12, starting there. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Holy Father, thank you for this passage. Thank you for everything you do. Lord, I pray that you'll just continue to guide and bless us as we do your will. Just that I pray. Amen.